Who do you think really has the last laugh regarding our vapor of a life? James 4, 13 to 17. On earth, and then our eternal life in heaven or hell. Psalm 2 will give us some insight into answering that question. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. The context here is not only that the nations oppose Jesus, but that they also oppose his anointed, his children. Bad idea. And why do you think that God laughs and has his mockers in derision? Mere laughingstocks. Well, Psalm 2 demonstrates that not only does God have a sense of humor, but that he always has the last laugh, long after his opponents realize that he will not be mocked. Galatians 6, 7. Remember, beloved, that to sow unbelief is to reap ungodliness and ultimately eternal separation from God. Those who rage against God, be they nations and their leaders, or common folk blinded by vanity will find themselves one day seeking cover from his awful wrath. It says in Isaiah 2:19, And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. It has been said that birds of a feather flock together, and in the worst possible sense, thieves, adulterers, murderers, to say nothing of false shepherds, teachers, leaders, and believers, all tend to stick together, while true followers of the Lord stick to Jesus. Proverbs 18, 24, Psalm 146, 3. These are not the status quo Christians but the status holy in Christ followers. If you are truly his, you will not be popular in this world, probably not popular in most of the false churches pervading North America. God laughs. Did you know that? He shares the joy that your father felt when you were born as a baby. Psalm 139, 13 to 16 and when you are born again as one of his own in Christ. John 3, 7. God also laughs when human beings whom he created in his own image, Genesis 1, come against him. Something about our fallen nature makes us believe we're really something. 
Really the life of the party. Success, money, popularity, and pride are the t-shirts we covet. Every one of these cheap garments end up as filthy rags before our holy God. Isaiah 64, 6. And then there is Jesus, whom God loves and has installed permanently and eternally on his holy hill, whom he has exalted to the highest place at his right hand in heaven. Hebrews 12, 2. Holy perfection. In fact, Jesus is the only one who meets God's glorious standard. As for the rest of us, death is our lot in life. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Please listen and understand then that to glory in yourself and your own goodness, whether that be according to the world system, 1 John 2, 15 to 17, or in your spiritual life, you have your reward on this earth, Matthew 6, 1 to 4. Congratulations and enjoy. Your eternal destination, however, may not be so enjoyable. Listen to Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have we cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. But it does not have to be this way. Listen again to Psalm 2, 10 to 12 in a modern translation. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son, or he will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him, leaders and lay people alike. If God is tugging on your heart right now to come to him, or to come to him in a deeper, more authentic way, surrender all to him. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord right now. 1 Peter 5, 6. Trust in Jesus today. Take refuge in Jesus today. And don't be deceived or discouraged while the world or the false church laughs at God and laughs at you for clinging to Jesus alone. Remember that God has your back knowing for certain that the last laugh will be his alone.